Welcome to April 28th, third work day of the week, that we shall call it Tuesday, the year 2009. Now, time to get right over into the Lord's Care Ministry. Knowledge and Wisdom Comes from Above, day 118 of the year 2009. Brethren, now it's time to grab our Bibles and open up and read along with me. Also, take pad and pencil and write these chapter and verses down so that you can study the whole context at your own leisure. And that way you get much more out of this lesson. Also, brethren, as I go through it quite fast, the chapter and verse, use the pause button down here so that you can find it and read along with me. And I think that's mighty important. Like this, we start at John chapter 11 and verse 11. Our friend is sleeping. Also, you will find whenever I see an E-T-H on the end of the word, I replace it with an I-N-G, put an is before the word, and that brings it right up to date now. Okay, our friend is sleeping. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 14. I would not have you be ignorant, brother, concerning them which are asleep. That means the people that, that died on you, that, that is dead. That you may sorrow not, even as others, which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Sleep in these people have been following Jesus been following the commandments, been following that narrow path, they sleep in Jesus, God will bring with him. Now let's turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 16 through 18 and verse 20. If the dead raise not, then is not Christ raised? And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. You are yet in your sins. Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. But now is Christ risen from the dead and became the first fruits of them that slept. Now let's turn over to Joshua chapter 4 and we will read verse 1, 3, and 7. It came to pass when all the people were clean, passed over Jordan, that the Lord spake unto Joshua, saying, Take you hence out of the midst of the Jordan, out of the place where the priest's feet stood firm, twelve stones, and these stones shall be a memorial unto the children of Israel forever. Acts chapter 2 and verse 32. This Jesus had God raised up, Wherefore we are a witness. Acts chapter 10 and verse 41. Witnesses chosen before God, who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. Wisdom comes from above. Fools hate knowledge. Fools are corrupt in many ways. Ignorant. Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 16. Every prudent man acts with knowledge, but a fool lays open his folly. Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 7. Go from the presence of a foolish man when you do not precede him the lips of knowledge. Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 7. The lips of the wise despise knowledge, but the heart of the fool does not do so. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 2. A fool has no delight in understanding, but in expressing his own heart. Proverbs chapter 30 and verses 2 through 3. Surely I am more stupid than any man, and do not have the understanding of a man. 
I neither learned wisdom nor have knowledge of the Holy One. Treacherous. Proverbs chapter 17 and verse 12. Let a man meet a bear robbed of her cubs rather than a fool in his folly. Boy, that'd be wicked, wouldn't it? Vicious. Proverbs chapter 30 and verse 14. There's a generation whose teeth are like swords and whose fangs are like knives to devour the poor of the earth and the needy from among men. Hastily. Proverbs chapter 18 verse 13. He who answers a matter before he hears it, it is a folly and a shame to him. I've known quite a few people like that. He is a Philippian pilgrim, and I might be one of them, I don't know. A workman for God, a friend of Christ, soldiers of Christ. Arise! Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 13. Put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. Brethren, in God's word only do we trust. Never in the tradition of men. You have just heard and hopefully read all these proverbs of the fool and the foolish. The ones that do not want to hear the truth. They go their own way. The tradition of men wants to go the, his own way and not follow the Lord. They take that broad path that leads to destruction. Christ says to take that narrow path that leads to the kingdom and salvation. You can read that in Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 and 14. Believe it. Also read in Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 through 23. There, in there, when he says, I never knew you, he's talking about you and me who follow the tradition of men. Well, brethren, if you want to change your ways, get down on your knees and repent. Ask the Father and the Son for forgiveness. And if you truly want to change in your heart, they will hear you and give you the wisdom and understanding of their word. Well, with that, brethren, we're going to close for today. You all have a great and wonderful day. I know I will, and God willing, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.